thank you for asking me to talk, well you didn't ask me to talk, thank you for letting me speak uh, here today. What I'm going to talk about is um, community co-production, how we're deploying 3D modelling within a community context um, for recording and researching and raising awareness of rock art in Scotland. Um, th this work is part of um, a five year project called Scotland's Rock Art Project which is funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council and it's based at Historic Environment Scotland. We're working in partnership with um, Edinburgh University School of History, Classics and Archaeology and Glasgow School of Art, School of Simulation and Visualisation. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is look very quickly at um, what Scotland's Rock Art is, um, what we're doing, how we're working with communities and then talk a bit about the, the benefits and um, the limitations um, of uh, 3D modelling um, co-production with communities. Um, so, um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with rock art in Scotland, um, the, the carvings are based around um, circular motifs and they're commonly called cup and ring carvings. Um, we don't know exactly when they were made, but it's thought that they were created predominantly in the Neolithic um, and possibly into the early Bronze Age, so maybe around 4000 um, to 2000 BC. And the carvings are um, almost entirely made on natural boulders and outcrops in the open landscape. Um, we know that there are about 2,700 um, cup and ring carvings recorded in Scotland. Um, and um, what survives today is only probably a tiny fraction of what was there originally. Uh, they, they are disappearing very fast. Um, the, the carvings in Scotland are part of uh, a kind of wider carving practice with very similar motifs, very similar symbols found in parts of England, Ireland um, and northern and western Europe and occasionally in, in parts of the Mediterranean um, and central Europe. Um, but despite, despite so the Rokati, I mean, it is probably one of our most enigmatic um, and, and fascinating, but also neglected um, parts of the historic environment. Um, it's, it's difficult to access, it's often covered by vegetation, it's often in remote locations, uh, it's quite difficult to find. And um, so, as a, partly as a consequence of this, it's, it's poorly understood um, outside the heritage sector um, and little known um, by the general public. Um, it's also very vulnerable, it's exposed to um, weather, it's exposed to animal human agents and um, biological and vegetation growth. So um, what we're doing, um, the Scotland's Rock Art Project um, is working with communities across the country um, to um, develop a more comprehensive database of rock art in Scotland, uh, which can be used for research um, and for raising awareness um, of, uh, of the rock art. Um, so, sorry, this thing's a bit sticky. Um, so what we're doing is we are recruiting and training community teams across the country uh, to use a standardised recording methodology, a standardised toolkit to capture different types of data, um, including quantitative, uh, descriptive, uh, geospatial, and visual data. And um, one of the um, kind of important tools within this toolkit is um, structure for motion 3D modelling. We're also capturing, uh, we're also working with our, our teams to capture um, their perspectives and their social values of the rock art. And as this is a, a five year project, we have an opportunity to um, also chart how their perceptions and social values change during the course of the project through their kind of longer term um, engagement with, with the resource. Um, so we, we currently have 11 trained community teams using this standardised toolkit to uh, survey and record rock art from around Scotland. Um, We've got, we've developed um, a data um, input system uh, which is interfacing with our website and this enables our community teams, um, approved members of the community teams to upload the data that they capture in the field um, directly onto our website. And uh, just to explain kind of the, the process of flow of this, um, so the data collected in the field um, by the community teams is uploaded to our website by them. And um, they also process their uh, 3D, the 3D model, so the field data that they collect, they process using actually software to scan um, software, 
and then they upload their process models to um, the online platform Sketchfab. They then link the ID for each rock art model to our website. We, we then um, validate those records and those records go into our database where the data becomes available for uh, research um, both by us and other people and um, it also then automatically becomes accessible publicly on our website. Um, the, um, the social value data also that we gather from, uh, from our teams uh, will feed into those rock art records in our, in our database and become accessible via our website. And then at, um, at regular intervals, uh, those validated records are um, copied and transferred into CAML, the National Monuments Record CAML, and also shared with historic environment records. So we'll have one um, consistent um, standardised database for rock art in Scotland, which is publicly accessible through these different um, outlets. Um, so basically we're taking the existing, um, the existing traditional records and we're adding digital content to them and then reintegrating them back into the archive. Um, so I, I've finished a kind of completed record um, on our website will look like this and uh, this, this sort of home page for a record will allow, um, allow sorry, it will allow users to um, drill down into the, um, the descriptive and quantitative and spatial data uh, to also view um, the, uh, the sketches, field sketches, the conventional photographs and screenshots from the 3D models and also to look at the, um, the 3D models themselves. Um, so the little screen there is an embedded screen from Sketchfab. And um, this works. Okay, so. Um, so, so users will be able to, um, to, to view the 3D models on, a, on, on the big screen and interact with them um, in different ways. Um, so um, all that data will be publicly accessible and um, uh, this makes it very, compared to the records that exist at the moment, which are very limited in how you can visualise uh, rock art, um, this makes it a much more um, engaging experience for people. Um, to, see, to see the rock art in different ways. So that's, that's briefly in, um, what we're doing um, in the project. What I want to do now is talk through some of the, um, the benefits of using 3D modelling and uh, some of the restrictions that we're facing in the project. Um, so I'm going to start with the positives um, and I'm going to look at the, the practicalities, the practical benefits and also the intangible benefits before uh, focusing on the limitations. So there are, there are huge practical benefits for 3D modelling with community groups. Um, for community group production, it's a very user-friendly technique. Um, those of you that have, have used structure for motion know that it's, it's very straightforward to capture field data. Um, uh, it's, it's anybody who can take a photograph basically can capture field data as long as they're aware of the parameters um, of the software. Um, it's quick and so it's ideal for projects that are covering a lot of ground, particularly if people want to um, move from site to site very quickly and um, if they're sometimes having to cover big distances, they don't have to stand around a long time filling in forms and, and um, doing sketches if they're doing photogrammetry. They don't need very much equipment, um, a camera is obviously essential, but beyond that, um, the, not much is required. So it's very portable um, and very good for people to access rock art in remote locations, just having to carry a camera. Um, it also means that there's no specialist equipment needed. Um, we provide Azure Soft Photo Scan licenses for our teams, but there's also open source software for people to use, so that makes it very accessible for everybody. Um, and the, the absence of need for specialist equipment means that basically anybody can create three new models. And very importantly as well, um, it's um, objective, so all the data that's collected is consistent. It's a one-to-one -one digital reproduction of the object. And so when you've got a lot of different people collecting data, um, they're all collecting it in the same way and it's all consistent. 
There are also huge benefits for recording rock art, and photogrammetry 3D modelling is ideal for recording um, uh, carvings such as those we find in Scotland. The carvings are often um, very eroded, they're very difficult to see, um, and unless you have perfect light conditions, um, you can walk past them without noticing them. But the, um, the uh, 3D modelling is great because it, it doesn't impact on the rock surface. Um, in contrast to more traditional recording techniques such as rubbing and tracing, where you're, you're actually impacting on the rock surface, uh, the um, 3D modelling is non-intrusive. And um, it captures accurate, detailed information. And because the carvings are often difficult to see, it allows us to visualise a very faint um, and often almost invisible carvings. So just to give you a couple of examples, um, so th this is um, the kind of thing you might see in the field. This, this is actually quite a good, quite a visible piece of rock art. We can see immediately that there are cut marks on the surface, that there are some rings, um, but it, you know, we have to kind of scrutinise it very carefully to see exactly what's there. But when we, with the 3D modelling, it makes it vastly clearer. We can start seeing more, um, more obscure features. We can understand a lot more about the relationship between the carvings and the topography and uh, the, uh, the texture of the rock surface. So all these things are very useful, uh, very important for helping people understand what's there and, and helping us to do research. We can also understand a bit more, perhaps, about the creative processes involved in the production of the carvings. Um, and uh, so on this particular slide, um, we can see the individual tool markings um, that have been used for uh, where, where the rock has been hit with the stone tool to make an impression on it. So we can see those individual tool markings made by people in the past. Um, and we can uh, see a bit more about the stratigraphy of the carving, the, the order in which the motifs were, were created. So, uh, I'm sorry, my, my pointer thing, laser scan, doesn't do the same very, work, very well, but um, you can perhaps see to on one side of this motif, there's um, a line, a radial line coming out from the central cut mark, and that is cutting through the outer rings of the, the rings surrounding the cut mark in the middle. Um, so that, mo that um, linear, line, that radial line has been added um, subsequent to the, the rest of the motif. So we can start understanding a bit more about those, those creative processes, which is um, very important for our research. Um, there are also a lot of intangible benefits for, um, for recording uh, rock art, for 3D modelling rock art with communities. Um, first of all, oops. Um, so community capacity building, obviously we're embedding new skills uh, within communities and the, these skills are often, um, oh, sorry, so it's very sticky this thing and it's stuck. I'm going to do this manually. Um, yeah. What? I'll do, do it manually. Okay. Okay, so um, 3D modelling also has fantastic opportunities for sharing um, with a much wider audience um, through things like social media channels and the internet, but also through um, creation of physical uh, reproductions, three-dimensional reproductions using 3D printing. We can recreate rock art at different scales in different materials, and, and this is you know, a fantastic way of engaging new audiences uh, with rock art. Um, it, this, this then, these opportunities for sharing, for, for throwing that out into the public domain, <laughs> um, provide it. Um, but these, this provides um, in, in enhanced um, access for everybody and enhanced awareness of the rock art. of the rock art in new ways. So it's a case of it's a, a way of kind of democratizing uh, the resource. Okay, thank you. So it's a way of uh, kind of democratizing rock art, putting it very much into the hands of the public. And this leads, of course, to changing perceptions and social values, which has a knock-on effect for conservation and um, preservation of carvings. And also, um, 3D modelling, um, because it's a good way of getting it out there to people, can inspire different creative responses and new ways of interpreting the rock art. Um, so, 3D modelling with communities has huge uh, practical and um, intangible benefits, but there are also a few, um, needless to say, a few um, downsides. Um, 
uh, also <coughs> negative aspects. So I just want to look at these quickly. Um, first of all, community capacity. The, the work that we're doing requires a fairly hefty time input from our community teams. And, and so this means that um, the majority of people that we're working with are retired and they are digital immigrants. They're not grown up with digital technology. Um, so a lot of them don't want to learn a new digital technique. Um, those that do, um, for many of them it's a, a very steep learning curve. They need a lot of explicit guidance and support and they can easily be demotivated if things don't quite go to plan. Um, also, um, a certain amount of computer power, computer capacity is required um, for, the, for the modelling. And again, this isn't always embedded in, our, in the communities that we're working with. Um, so the way we resolve this is to, for them to capture high quality images in the field and then process them at whatever resolution um, their, their devices are capable of. Um, but also to share those original field photographs with us so that we can reprocess the models at higher resolution if needs be. Um, and there are also kind of practical considerations with actually moving um, chunks of data around. We need to be very careful with things like file naming conventions um, and so on. Um, and um, perhaps less practically, but it's a big issue nevertheless, um, of the, the community dynamics. Each of the community groups has its own um, kind of internal structure and its internal dynamics and its own motivators. So there's no sort of single blueprint um, in terms of how we interact with them. Uh, we need to engage with each of the communities in different ways and we need to be aware of, of their differences and their kind of internal dynamics. But overall, these, these, um, sort of, these issues uh, are far outweighed by the benefits. Um, and so we're hoping overall for very um, positive and constructive outcomes for the project. Um, first of all, obviously, the public accessible database that's co-produced with the community teams and accessible um, through, the, um, through our web database, but also through Canmore and the historic environment records. Um, a, a much better understanding and awareness of rock art in Scotland. Um, new creative responses and interpretations uh, of rock art in different ways, that, that could be a very exciting part of the project. And um, appreciation of how social value changes, um, of, of rock art changes through engagement. So, thank you.